This video will demonstrate a novel technique for meniscus centralization that promotes more native meniscus motion with fixation of the meniscotibial ligaments. Our disclosures can be found here. To illustrate the application of this technique, we will start with a demonstration of medial meniscus centralization in the setting of a posterior root tear. After a standard diagnostic arthroscopic evaluation, the meniscus posterior root is evaluated and found to be torn, leading to meniscal extrusion. A more representative clip from a different case is briefly shown here to demonstrate the importance of optimizing biology of the fixation with the rasp and elevating the meniscotibial ligament using a curved bankart elevator to promote excursion. Now back to the original case, we have made an accessory anteromedial portal anterior to the MCL about 2 cm medial to the anteromedial portal using the accessory intermediate portal, a drill guide for our anchor is introduced and a pilot hole is drilled, an Arthrex knotless fiber tack all suture suture anchor is inserted and deployed. The shuttling link sutures are then parked out of the anterolateral portal. Then we introduce an Arthrex fiber stitch all inside meniscus repair device into the anterolateral portal for a better angle and access to the centralization fixation point. The key here is to place a horizontal mattress on the undersurface of the meniscus through the joint capsule and remnant meniscotibial ligaments on either side of the blue repair stitch of the knotless anchor we just placed. Effectively, this staples the repair suture from the anchor to the meniscotibial ligament, creating a point of fixation without piercing the meniscus or meniscocapsular junction, as in previously described techniques. The repair stitch from the tibial anchor is then fed through the knotless mechanism in the anchor using the black and white shelling suture and provisionally tightened. We recommend placing one to two of these anchors in this fashion at the mid portion of the MCL and a second one just posterior to the MCL. Next, our focus is turned to the posterior root tear repair using a traditional transtibial technique. Initially, a cannulated drill pin is drilled into the prepared anatomic site. A wire is passed through the cannulated drill pin as seen here. The wire is pulled through the anteromedial portal and used to feed our root repair implant. We prefer to use the arthritic suture lock implant for retentional fixation at the subchondral bone level. The implant is fed through the wire and into the drilled tunnel. The anchor is then deployed by pulling on the sutures. The root repair sutures are then placed on the opposite side of a previously placed intrameniscal vertical mattress which functions as a ripstop. We do this here using a self-retrieving suture passer such as the Arthrix Knee Scorpion. The repair suture is then fed through the knotless mechanism via the link sutures. The suture is positioned appropriately to maximize the ripstop. This is again repeated with the other repair suture. The repair is then tensioned maximally. You can see the reduction of the root here. And then finally, we return to our tibial anchor repair stitch for the centralization. We retension the knotless mechanism maximally here as well. This creates the final construct for root repair and centralization, which is stable to probing. Next, we briefly demonstrate how this technique can also be used to centralize meniscus allograft transplantations. After the meniscal remnant has been trimmed back to a stable 1 to 2 mm rim, we use the same rasp and bank art elevator to roughen up the surfaces and release the meniscotibial ligaments. A similar accessory anteromedial portal is made, and the same knotless fiber tack anchor is also placed. The shuttling sutures are parked out the anteromedial portal in this case, and the same Arthrex fiber stitch all inside repair device is introduced from the anterolateral portal. The sutures are deployed in a horizontal mattress configuration again on the undersurface of the meniscal remnant through the capsule and meniscotibial ligaments. We see nicely how the horizontal mattress is placed on either side of the tibial anchor repair suture, stapling it to the meniscotibial ligament. Subsequently, the tibial anchor repair stitch is again fed through its knotless mechanism and provisionally tightened. We can now see how the meniscotibial ligament is advanced and secured to the tibia as in the previous case. The meniscus allograft is then passed into the knee using sutures pulling from the posterior transtibial tunnel. The graft can then be fixed as preferred by the surgeon knowing that the capsule and the meniscotibial ligaments have been secured, theoretically preventing extrusion of an appropriately sized graft. We thank you for your time and attention.